special. So it's a pleasure to have him with us this weekend. He'll be celebrating Masses tomorrow here in the parish. Um, Mass this evening is offered for the people of God, so let us gather then in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. As we come together as God's family, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. And so we pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. And let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came bringing food from the first fruits to Elisha, the man of God. Twenty loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So Elisha repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. A servant set it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. The response, you open your, your hand to feed us, Lord, you satisfy all our needs. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above, above all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six month wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. The Gospel of the Lord. This Sunday, we celebrate a new world day in the church. The Holy Father has designated the fourth Sunday of July as World Day of Prayer for grandparents and for the elderly. And I'm looking at that, and I'm looking at the documents that came out from Rome and suggestions and that, and I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, well, it makes perfect sense to me. Because what do we have in the readings? 
We have the multiplication of loaves and fishes. We have the multiplications of the loaves with Elisha. And everybody knows that you know what? If there had been a Nona on the Mount of Beatitudes, there wouldn't have been an issue with how do we make food for all of them. Because everybody knows that when you go to Grandma's house, there is always more food than you're ever going to eat or be able to consume. And Nona is going to sit there and say, Manja, Manja, eat more, eat more, you're too skinny. It's kind of like the priest who goes to the parishioner's house and they don't want you to leave without eating lots because nobody can trust a skinny priest. <laughs> this whole celebration or honoring of our grandparents and the elderly is something that is there, but it's not there. Most of us were brought up to honor our parents, honor our grandparents. But the reality is, most of us do a better job of honoring our grandparents than we do our parents. Because everybody knows that grandma and grandpa are going to do whatever you want them to do. How many of us were spoiled by our grandparents? The rest of you not? I feel sorry for you. I had this most loving grandmother. Grandma Tumbach loved me more than all the other grandchildren. <laughs> Do you know how I know that? Because I don't like cabbage rolls. But my grandmother always made cabbage rolls. And when my brother and I would go to her place for lunch during school, because twice a week we got to go to grandma's place for lunch, we would go there and nine times out of ten, there was cabbage rolls. And my brother would have cabbage rolls, and I would have a plate with cabbage, with meat, with rice, and a dollop of tomato sauce. Nicely separated. Because I didn't eat cabbage rolls. Grandma loved me more than all the rest. I knew it. But our grandparents also provide us with our history. They provide us with an understanding of who we are as we grow up. How many of us grew up listening to grandma and grandpa's stories? And how many of us recognize in our society today, oftentimes grandchildren are lucky to see grandma and grandpa once in a while? I've talked to many grandparents in this parish over the last year who have found it very, very difficult because they're not able to see their grandchildren. And the grandchildren are not able to see them. And that special bond between grandparents and grandchildren is essential in part of our growing up. I like to encourage people who have a grandparent who has dementia to take a tape recorder with them when they go to visit. Because they may not remember what they did yesterday, but they often remember what they did 20 years ago or 40 years ago, or 60 years ago, and all of a sudden you finally get the dirt on the family. Because <laughs> they don't remember how they sanitize the story, so you actually get one with all of the good stuff in there. I was sitting with one elderly lady, and her daughter was there, and we were talking, and none of you know what this is like but just try and work with me on this one. What do you do when a lady who's 92 years old is flirting with you and you're the priest? <laughs> and the daughter knows that your, her mother is flirting with you as the priest. And you know you're being flirted with. Except, I also recognize the fact that with her dementia, she probably didn't recognize me as the priest. And so I started asking questions. And the daughter turned on the tape recorder. And the daughter discovered that her mother had actually dated three people before she married this woman's father. We found out a whole history of the family. There's nothing bad in that. 
we also discovered that she had never tried to date the priest. That was a good piece of information. A few months later, I was in there, and her me memory had diminished some more. But this time when I went in there, she saw me and my clerics, and the first thing she did is knelt down on the floor. Now we're talking, this woman is 92 years old, and she kneels down on the floor and begins to go to confession in Latin. Well, there's one thing about it. Latin, English, you can figure out what the sins were. The second part of it is I'm standing there thinking, Kevin, you don't remember how absolution goes in Latin. What are you going to do now? I was very, very lucky because halfway through her confession, she forgot what she was doing and we were able to move on. Jesus takes care of us. But you see, even these people who are elderly, suffering from dementia, struggling with life, have a story. They have great value to us. When we were kids, my mom used to take us Saturday morning, pile into the station wagon, mom's guitar in the back, carefully perched, and we would go to the nursing home. And we, we had to perform for the people in the nursing home. They didn't care how well we sang, though I'd like to say we sang very, very well. At least some of the family sang very well. That would be my younger brother and sister. My brother Michael and I, well, we, we provided the entertainment. They sang one note, we sang another. It was interesting. But you got to know these people. You got to know them. And I sometimes wonder how many of our young people really know how to deal with the elderly nowadays. When did they get the opportunity to be with the elderly? With those people who are stories. And of course, as kids, we'd be there. So the girls would sing and the boys would sit with the elderly people. The boys would sing. The boys would make noise and the girls would talk to the elderly people and then we would sing together as a family. But you got to know some of these people. You got to have a relationship with them. You also get to discover who had the peppermints, right? Who had the soft candies? Who had the hard candies, okay? And whose candies you really wanted and who you should stay away from. But they all had a story. And of course, you got used to the fact that there was a lot of them who would grab you by the cheeks to tell you who they, you reminded them of. You're just like my grandson, nephew, somebody in the family. And you recognize that you're triggering memories that bring them joy and bring them happiness. This is the gift of grandparents and elderly. There is a story, and we all have one. But do we share it? In my homilies, I drag my mom and dad into them regularly. I don't drag grandma and grandpa into them very much. Probably because there's a lot of grandma turned stories I can't use in the church. But that's okay. It's my mother's mom, so we don't worry about it. But the challenge is, is they all have a story. And the thing is, do we take the time to listen to the story? Do we validate the story? Do we honor the story? In our scriptures, we listen to the scriptures so that we get to know Christ better. We listen to the scriptures so that we learn how to honor God. But God is present in all these people. You sit with that elderly person, that is Jesus Christ. We are all the sons and daughters of God. 
And by our baptism, we have received the Holy Spirit. Well, where the Holy Spirit is, so is the Father and the Son. Do we recognize the dignity of that person? From the moment of conception to the natural end of life, these are God's children. Do we recognize that? Okay, so you don't work anymore. Well, guess what? Work does not define who we are. It doesn't matter what kind of job you have. That doesn't define you. What kind of car you drive doesn't define you. What defines you is the fact that you are a child of God placed on this earth for relationship. It's relationships that define you. How many of us grew up with, that's Martin's grandson. That's Tiny's boy. How many of us were identified by our parents and our godparents? Yeah. How many of us carry names that go back to our grandparents or our great-grandparents? Because they prayed to God that you might be like that person. Sadly, most of us disappointed greatly. But there was that tradition. That history. The same as we read the scriptures to understand the history of Christ. Do we understand the history of our own families, our own communities? One of the great privileges that a priest has is that you get to sit with these people and you get to listen to them. The sad part about it is, is in all things, it's like there's not enough time for all of it. But then that's where all of us are called to be those disciples. One of the most powerful ministries for me is being able to visit a nursing home. The trouble with it is, is there's not enough time. But so many people can. It's one ministry that, please God, this parish needs to get working again. With all the different nursing homes we have in this parish, there are a lot of people there. And the sad part about it is there's some people that never have anybody come to visit them. And just being able to go and visit with someone, to spend some time with them, to validate their life by their story. What were the things that were most important? And I go back to the fact that your job, your career, what you owned, where you lived, very rarely comes out of the story. What comes out of the story is relationships, friendships, the losses of friendship, the deaths in the family. And sometimes you get lovely stuff about, and I can't believe that sister of mine married that man, and da 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 da, -da and it's all good. Because it's the story. As we celebrate this weekend, we're invited to reflect upon our own grandparents, the elderly in our lives, and how do we reach out to them? And I know some of you sitting there are going, excuse me, Father, I am one of the elderly. Well, guess what? There's people out there older than you are. Right? And the thing is, just because we think we're in the elderly bracket doesn't mean that we can't still be of assistance to others. A listening ear, as long as it hears, is a listening ear. I think of my grandparents and things that they taught us, things that they probably shouldn't have taught us, but there's a story. And yeah, Grandma Turn gets dragged into homilies every now and then. Grandma Tumback gets dragged into homilies every now and then. 
But if you live long enough, you may recognize yourself in some of my homilies. Because all of you have a story. And many of you have discovered your stories. One of the priest's responsibility is to remind the people of God that their story finds their home in the gospel. And there are a number of you sitting here tonight that I know if company showed up at your house unannounced, they would not have left your house hungry. Because there's a number of nonas sitting here that know how to stretch a potato, add a little extra water, toss in a little extra pasta, open another jar of tomato sauce, and stretch it. Let nobody leave the house hungry. What did Jesus do in the gospel? What did the prophet Elisha do? Fed them. And there was an abundance left over. I'm not sure, but I think almost every one of us here probably has a similar story in their life where nobody left the table hungry. You will find your life in the Gospels. Just take the time to reflect and read. Listen to the story. Let us stand and make our profession of faith as we pray the Apostles' Creed together. So let us tell each other what, we, what it is we believe as we pray together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, we humbly present our prayers to you, for you are compassionate and loving. For our religious leaders and all those who inspire us, that they may lead us to deeper faith in God and a stronger love for others, we pray to Lord. Lord for government leaders, that they may always lead us to the common good and care of our neighbor, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those who are sick, lonely, discouraged, or oppressed, that they may be strengthened by God's help and aided by their friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord for grandparents, that they may always be respected for the gift they are to their families and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the elderly, may they continue to teach and guide us and be shown the respect due to them and the wisdom they offer our society, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those called to the vocation of married life, May they always be a blessing and joy for family, friends, and community. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those who have died, especially Camille Cassis and John Pinto. May they enjoy perfect happiness and total fulfillment in eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord Father in heaven, we ask you to hear and answer our prayers, for we make them to you through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord, wash away our iniquities, cleanse us of all of our sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, and through the powerful work of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. pray together. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray the prayer to St. Michael together. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thank you very much. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us abide in the peace of Christ. You can all be seated now. Hubert needs the bulletins for one. And Santiago paid me so that he could come and say a few last words. <laughs> I just, I did ask Father Kevin uh, if he could allow me some words at the end of the Masses this weekend. It's kind of hard to believe that it's already been a year since I arrived at the parish. Um, and this being my last weekend, I thought it was fitting for me to come up here and just say a word of thanks to all of you. Uh, it's been an interesting year, I think we can all agree, uh, through everything that has happened. But nonetheless, the Lord has made it a very good year for me. And um, that wouldn't have been the case had I not been assigned to this parish. I give you thanks for welcoming me into your parish, for into your families. Uh, I've gotten to know so many of you and uh, you've just given me so much this year. I'm thankful for the witness of your faith, for sharing that faith with me. And throughout this year, which has been hard, it's been hard to live out that faith because lockdowns, restrictions, all of that stuff. But nonetheless, you have kept strong in your faith throughout all of that. And that for me has been very inspiring in my journey to the priesthood. I give you thanks also for challenging me in my faith. Through your words, through your affirmation, through your encouragement, you have helped me and challenged me to to grow into this calling, to grow into what the Lord is asking of me, uh, and to be able to see myself more and more into what that is. And lastly, I thank you for, throughout this year, being the embodiment of the church. Um, I remember when I first started discerning a call to the priesthood, it was out of the love for the Lord that this desire came to me, and that, that its invitation came to me. And over this years of formation in the seminary, I've grown more and more in love, not only of him, but also of the church. And throughout this year, you have been the embodiment of that church. And I have come to dearly love All Saints Parish. It's been a blessing for me to be here, and I thank you all for being part of this journey. I ask that you continue to pray for me. Uh, I have two more years to go, and uh, it's going to be hard to go back to the books in September, so I'm going to need lots of prayers. <laughs> uh, thank you all. Now you can stand up. <laughs> and since I've already dismissed you, just remember, Father John and I get to leave first. <laughs>